thank you for coming. It's the first uh, session, not after the party, but still, yeah, first session. So uh, I definitely appreciate that. So uh, what what can you expect uh, from uh, from today's uh, today's talk? Uh, it will be about adopting existing agile methods for uh, environments that are generally big, uh, big projects and biggish teams. So in the first part of the talk, I will try to bring us uh, on the same page. Uh, then I will uh, be like uh, concrete about uh, how to do this adoption or, or about the proposal. And uh, there will be then a demo, and then some questions and answers. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how the how the time will, what the time will allow. Uh, so, uh, in, in at the beginning, a disclaimer: uh, agile is a term which covers a big surface. One of the subdivisions can be that it's about doing the right thing, doing delivering value for customers. Uh, and uh, another aspect is to be kind of efficient, to work well, yeah? Not necessarily fast, but also in a sustainable pace, predictable and so on. And, <coughs> and in this talk, when I talk about agile, I mean like the second, uh, the, the second aspect, yeah? I won't talk about the first one uh, at all, not because it's not important, but that's, that's what the talk uh, is about, so just to be clear. So uh, I am a, a Red Hat developer, I'm a team lead also of the security compliance team. And when I joined the company like six years ago, uh, we were brought to, uh, or the Scrum framework was introduced to us, yeah? And uh, we were on one of the first teams. And what we found out, uh, that it's not so easy, yeah? It's not a smooth ride. Uh, we kind of introduced it, and then we noticed that we still have some issues with, mainly like with predictability. And because we are like an open-minded team, we checked out what can we change in order to improve the situation. And uh, we made, I think, our uh, agile practitioners happy because we were experimenting and desperate because we have tried like uh, various things. And uh, we, we, we have evolved and the evolution sti still continues. And we have simply found out that the problem is a difficult one, so uh, even a good approach is not good enough. We need a great approach, yeah? So we, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. However, uh, the main pay points that we have identified are uh, the need to have a groomed backlog, which, which is like a, a very important concept in, in Agile, as far as I understand. Being like a software engineer, yeah? No, not, not a person with Agile, uh, agile education. And also, uh, as I'll get to it later, we are kind of a bigger team, so a lot of things are in progress uh, during the execution, and uh, it's like a mess to some degree. Very difficult to find out whether things are going, going good, good or not, yeah? So uh, why is it so difficult? Uh, very briefly, uh, it might be that one is not developing a web app for, uh, from scratch for a well-defined customer, but one is developing a small feature on top of some kind of big, big product, yeah? And because the product doesn't have one customer, which whom we, we can uh, communicate and say, we will do this and that will be different, but we need to keep everybody more or less happy, then actually a lot of work will be integration and not the del deliverable, yeah? Like putting the feature there, integrating it with the rest, and uh, just like the small piece here is like presentable, but the, log the work that has to be done is, is re really huge, yeah? So, so things are like kind of slow. Uh, also, uh, the team can be big. Usually big teams, I don't think that they are necessarily faster, but they definitely can do more things and I, uh, they are in some degree more stable. If the, uh, if the uh, conditions change, a uh, big team can really adapt, take more responsibilities, or even like uh, exploit opportunities, but probably won't be doing it uh, like in a r specifically fast way. Uh, and one offering is if you have a big team, split it into small teams, work much better, but maybe you can't do that, yeah? Because the tasks that are coming 
are kind of changing. They are not stable. They are not always the same. So if you subdivide, then you will find out that you need to rethink the subdivision and so on. So it's not always a possibility to get rid of big teams and, and make, make small teams. So uh, we are in this big environment, which means that uh, things are slow uh, in order to uh, accomplish anything like interesting. Uh, the iteration can't be those two weeks tops, yes, but, but really like more time is needed. Uh, during the execution, a lot of things are uh, in progress at the same time as a result, yeah, especially if the iteration is longer. And what suffers is the predictability. And as an engineer, I definitely came across the idea like screw predictability. What counts is the work that is being accomplished. What about giving engineers the right uh, tools, the trust, the resources, and they will do the thing in the fastest possible way and sc screw the predictability. Yeah? Why, why this is not a good idea, uh, some people know, uh, but, but, uh, but s some, might, uh, some might doubt that. So uh, I have a exam counter example. Uh, imagine that you are a student and you are learning for an exam. And you know that you can get like questions from three boxes, the green box, 50% probability of the question, red box, 40%, blue box, 10% probability, yeah, that you will dra draw questions from the box a topic, yeah? And the question for the student is, in which order you will learn for, for the exam, yeah? In which order? And it looks like that you should start with the green box questions because this is the most likely, right? But the right answer is you can't really know what is the right order unless you know how difficult it is to master questions in the box. And if you know the cost, uh, then you can make a good decision. And in this particular example, it is clear that you should, you should start with red, continue with blue, and then, then do with green, because red and blue together are also 50%, and their costs are much lower. So uh, where, am I, uh, where, where am I aiming at? Um, predictability basically means that you know the costs and you know you need to know the costs in order to prioritize yes so uh, whenever we do prioritization we are in need of predictability so if we have a big team big project and issues with predictability we simply can't ignore it yeah we, we need to address it uh, if you think of the previous example as well it turns out that we estimate all the time uh, we estimate when we go shopping, when we travel, when we do pet project software, we estimate all the time. So why is it that the groom backlog or the estimations that they are so painful? So um, there is like another example and uh, we see a situation like that in software development quite often that uh, how much effort will it require to remove the rock when we see the top, we don't see, we don't see the bottom. So uh, those gentlemen might have different ideas and whoever played scrum poker definitely experienced that. Uh, anybody who, who played scrum poker in their lives? Could you raise hands? Not, no, well, about half, half of the audience. I, I, I would expect more. So uh, the other half will experience it maybe, if they are engineers at least. Uh, so what happens is that uh, one person says, I think the task difficulty is five uh, of something, yeah? Other person says the difficulty is 15, and uh, then they discuss and they find out that there is nothing that uh, one person doesn't know, yeah? Everybody knows everything, but still one thing's five, one thing's 15. What to do that? It's a, it is a very difficult situation because it's about the unknown, it's not about the known. Um, and it definitely makes people uncomfortable because the number will be settled on 10. Yeah, the number will make it into the tracker. Th it will be visible to managers and people are not so happy. So in order to know how to help this situation, we need to uh, take a look what is an estimation. And if somebody says, uh, I think the rock can be removed in two weeks, what happens in your brain, yeah? What happens in your brain if, uh, if you hear from somebody that they will do something in two weeks? It means that probably they won't be able to do it in the first week. 
because it's very difficult to do things fast. It's easy to do to them slow, but, but uh, to do miracles, very difficult. However, it is somewhat possible that they will do it earlier, yeah, between first and second week. It is, however, most likely that you will do it slightly, they will do it slightly later, yeah, because before, uh, between the second and third. When the third week has passed, you start thinking it might never be done. Yeah, it happens. It happens in software. It happens, it happens anywhere. So what is an estimation? What, what is it? Yeah, and we know, we, we know it all. It's a distribution of probability, actually. And uh, the thing from the annotation that everything has been invented, here it is. Uh, it's, it has been introduced in late 50s of the last century. Uh, and it, this, this concept that uh, estimation is a probability distribution, it's called PERT. It's being taught, I, I think, uh, as a part of project management. And it introduces this concept of uh, three-point estimation. So instead of estimating tasks with one number, they are supposed to be estimated with three numbers, which sounds quite scary, because if one number is a problem, three numbers might be a much bigger problem, right? But maybe it's not the case. Uh, the guidance is that uh, we uh, we come up with the op optimistic estimate, uh, which should be so optimistic that we think that we can do even better with uh, one or two percent uh, probability. Yeah, so it's not like it's not completely rosy dream. It's just like optimistic. The most likely estimate uh, is what we normally target, and finally we have the pessimistic estimate. It can be like story points. It can be weeks. It doesn't matter really. Uh, and again, the pessimistic estimate is not a promise that it won't be later than that, that it won't take more effort than, 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 than is the estimate. But uh, again, uh, there, sh there is supposed to be like a couple of percent probability that even that will be slipped. Yeah, whether it's one or two percent, so that probably doesn't really matter. Um, so what uh, does this approach, so yeah, so, so, sorry, one, one, more, one more thing. Uh, usually we are required to put a single number in some tracker, yeah, in Jira, whatever. And the good news is that as any probability distribution, this three point uh, estimation, probability distribution, PERT or beta distribution, whatever, whatever we like to say it, it uh, can be uh, represented by the mean, and the mean value is not the same as the most likely value. The mean value um, is somewhere between the most likely and the long tail. So in this case, we see that the pessimistic uh, estimate has the long tail, so it's like more pessimistic. But uh, if, uh, the, uh, if the task would be more like optimistically inclined that, for example, uh, uh, for, for, for example, there will be no bugs to fix after we run tests. Yeah, then then we say uh, we we think it might be like five points, but maybe there will be no work to do. Yeah, uh, in in those situations, the expected value would, would be uh, would would be actually skewed to the optimistic end. So, what problem does this solve for us? In in other from other another point of view. Uh, there is this uh, concept that we don't have in check that uh, estimations or what, whatever whatever quantities they can be accurate they can be precise yeah we don't discriminate that in check so uh, the when we put uh, numbers uh, to, uh, to 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 estimations we are infinitely precise yeah number is simply a point so we are infinitely precise but as we all know we won't be accurate. So we are in this unpleasant situation. However, if we substitute the estimate uh, with this interval estimation, we are probably slightly improving the accuracy by using the expected value. Uh, and we are making the precision actually less, yeah, or, or, or we, we, we have lower precision, but it is, uh, it is more uh, proportional to the actual accuracy. So we have actually better odds of hitting, hitting the target if we have lower precision. Interesting if you think about it, but, but undeniably true. So uh, this is like a very interesting theoretical concept. Has anybody ever used it in this room? Has anybody ever used it in this room? Apart from my team. <laughs> 
Nobody, nobody, nobody. Okay. So uh, me, me and my team have been uh, giving it a shot um, uh, for a couple of a couple of months, and there is one excellent news regarding that: uh, that we have concluded that uh, the process of estimating and using the estimations when you use three-point estimations instead of like traditional ones, the three-point approach is not worse. Yeah. The process is not more painful. It's not like three times more painful to, to, uh, to, to produce those numbers. So the process is not more painful. And maybe it's even more comfortable. We are not completely sure about that. Yeah? But, but we will we'll continue our investigations. Uh, at the same time, it's, uh, this is a difficult problem. Estimation, estimating is a difficult problem. So even a good solution even a better solution doesn't completely uh, solve everything. Uh, so we found out that uh, you need some practice, you need some guidance uh, to, to estimate using three-point estimations. And also, it's like difficult to explain. What does it mean that there are like misunderstandings? And, and uh, we, we, don't, we, don't know we, we, we don't know exactly. Uh, then the second thing, uh, the second pain point was the execution, which is busy, plenty of things going on, and so on. Uh, sometimes things are in progress uh, for a long time, uh, and it's usually a problem, but if you have a lot of things, you know, in the sprint, then you don't notice. Uh, on the other hand, some things are not in progress, and maybe it's okay, maybe it's not, maybe they should be, and so on. Uh, so when you have a long iteration, you can't, uh, do this traditional approach that uh, you, you, after those two weeks, you do some retrospection and you say this was wrong, this was wrong, yeah? If the iteration is very long, then you need to act in progress as soon as, uh, as the problem is obvious enough. So, so it's necessary to have some tooling to uh, introspect w what is going on and, uh, and we will see that in the demo. So, uh, yeah, uh, I put here a, s a screenshot of, of a Jira uh, because this is the only software that we use which basically has a field to input estimations. I'm not really sure how Jira can be configured. However, I think that uh, for big teams which have m more challenges yeah, regarding estimating and so on, Having this small field, yeah, next to next to some, some other stuff, uh, like ha having this small field basically invisible when uh, when you are not looking at the issue, that it's something which doesn't make the estimating easier. And uh, for some uh, uh, for some reason, I at that time when I realized that, I thought like, oh, might be a great idea to try to develop a software. Uh, that would kind of address this issue, that would provide an interface to the data that might live in Jira or wherever. Yeah, GitHub even doesn't have like a field for estimations. GitLab has something, I guess. Uh, and that would, uh, the software would allow to the team members to estimate, and it would allow them to see the execution of their own long sprint and maybe even do some stuff like uh, deliver forecast and so on. So the project uh, exists. Uh, it's, uh, I wouldn't advertise it as something that works, generally. Uh, it's like a dem demo. And uh, if you are a Red Hatter who uses uh, Jira, then it might be a good idea maybe to reach out if you like that. Uh, in, in other case, uh, I, I would suggest waiting or uh, maybe using, using the Gitter, uh, Gitter, uh, Gitter channel that the project has. Uh, however, uh, I hope uh, the demo, demo will work. Uh, what we will try to model? We will try to model like a sprint which has two epics, if we say it like that. One is that we do an upstream release, uh, we, uh, uh, which, which includes fixing bugs, running tests, and writing a blog post. And then we do the downstream release that uh, includes Again, uh, running tests and then uh, making uh, the package, the downstream package, out of, out of the upstream source code. So, uh, yeah, five minutes delay. But I, I guess, I guess we will, I guess we will manage. So let me see. One. So what do you see right now? Is 
is like uh, is uh, the interface of, of the program, uh, and uh, it allows us to uh, estimate, to track uh, the execution, and also to simulate that the execution is in progress. Yeah, so uh, we go uh, to the uh, planning interface, and there we can see that somebody, it was me. Uh, input those two epics. Yeah, it's like not a software uh, used for uh, that can be like seriously seriously offered. Yeah, it's like more something that works. So um, we have uh, we have this uh, fixed uh, blockers uh, issue, and somebody already put that it's five. Yeah, the the cost of the of, of it is five. And we can make out of this one point estimate, we can make the three point estimate. So if we say uh, fixed blockers, usually, usually it's like uh, pretty difficult. So we say optimistic estimate is four, pessimistic estimate is eight. Yeah. Then I click save and it kind of, uh, it, it stores it somehow. And uh, we have this, we have this, uh, we, we have this plot. So I will do it. I will do this for that issue. Uh, releasing upstream again. Yeah, probably it will be it will be easy. So uh, I will say pessimistic three. Otherwise, it will be the same. Writing blog post uh, three points. Yeah, sometimes uh, people are uh, very very nitpicky. Yeah. So we say optimistic three, most likely four. Pessimistic, I would say it, it can be it can be eight. And let's estimate the rest two issues. Uh, fixing issues in downstream tests, running downstream tests, and fixing issues in downstream tests. I think that they might be nothing to fix. Everything will work. So I will say optimistic estimate is two, <coughs> and pessimistic estimate I would say can be, can can be like uh, five because there might be a problem with, with with infrastructure. Yeah, and so on. So uh, if we take a look, uh, it all can be added. Like the uh, the individual estimates uh, can be uh, statistically correctly added together. So we see that the cost. Or the the pr the, uh, the uh, aggregate estimate of the of the entire sprint is somewhere between like 15 yeah, to 22 story points, something something like that. All right, and what we uh, any question to that? Might be a good. Yeah. So the question was, what the points uh, are? What the points mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like a story points that are supposed to be proportional to objective complexity of the task. One could estimate in person weeks. That's not a problem. But uh, estimating in points uh, is like uh, all uh, an alternative. Yeah, uh, Fernando. Yeah. Yeah, the question was uh, whether we have the story point definition uh, 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 there. Uh, well, uh, we don't. Okay. We, we, uh, we, we don't at, uh, at the moment. We use, uh, we use currently uh, the basically uh, conversion, conversion ratio to our earlier units that we have been using. Yeah? The plan for the next planning season, not the, not the current one, but the, to the next, is to come up with this definition table and so on. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the question is uh, uh, about like epic, uh, epic level uh, uh, sum summaries, yeah, whether, whether they uh, just reflect the expected value, which is like the traditional work, or whether they reflect uh, uh, or the, the whole. Uh, what you see now, it reflects everything, yeah? It reflects really all those three values. It's like a statistical, a statistical process, uh, sum of random, random variables. Var variables. Uh, ten minutes left, so I will proceed with the demo of the execution. Yeah, 
So what we can do here, actually? Uh, I can say in a separate tab in that, in that same web app that uh, the team will deliver certain amount of story points and, and there will be some progress. So I choose that we, uh, that the team fixes, uh, works on fixing blockers and they deliver two story points. So I click next, hopefully it won't crash. And I will refresh, I will refresh the, uh, the, the, uh, the web app. So the not burn down chart, because burn down chart doesn't distinguish between states, yeah? The not burn down chart basically says that nothing has been delivered yet. Yeah, that's, that's, that's correct. So I continue, let's say 1.5 story point, the team delivers, uh, refresh again. Yeah, so it shows that something, something is in progress, but still, still, not, still not done. So continue, 1.5 story points. Yeah. And we have our first task complete. Oh yeah. So uh, what, what, we, what we can see in this uh, not, not burn down chart is that the burn down is not linear. Why is that so? Because there are like deadlines uh, to, to those epics and uh, we don't expect to work on something at certain, at certain time and conversely we, we expect to work on, 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 on some, something else uh, the, the other time. Yeah? To make it clear, uh, individual epic burndowns look like this. We suppose the upstream release to be finished early and the ups downstream release to start a little bit later. All right, so, uh, so one, one thing has been finished and when a, task, when a task is finished, it already makes sense to talk about velocity uh, of, the, of the sprint or, or in the sprint. So we can see that because one task has been accomplished, then the team at that time when the task was in progress had a velocity of the cost of the task divided by how long it took. Yes, so this is like the, the, the velocity, uh, measured velocity, velocity at, the, at, at that time. Uh, I continue uh, with the upstream release. So 1.5 story points, one story points, and we have an upstream release uh, done. Yeah, and again, uh, we see that something happening with this kind of burn down, and uh, we, we also see yeah, that, that there is like uh, some velocity increment, uh, velocity increment around the upstream release. Because uh, we have some uh, data regarding the velocity and we have also uh, some uh, data regarding the size of the task, we can estimate when the task, uh, when, when everything will be completed, yeah? So right now, if the team continues like that, uh, it looks like that uh, they will be done somewhere after the, after the second week, yes? the 95% uh, confidence is, is, is before, before the sprint is supposed to end. Uh, and this, is, this, is the, this vertical line is uh, where, uh, where, where, is the, uh, where is the day of, of, of the simulation. So I will just click some numbers here uh, to, to have, uh, to have uh, time for, uh, for questions. I will put two everywhere. Hop, hop, hop. Oh, yeah. And the team, the team has uh, the, the, the team has delivered everything. They did it fast because I put two, and and uh, and um, there was not uh, there was not uh, uh, the, there were like three weeks, and the total cost was like 18 story points. So so that that was. Uh, uh, very comfortable for the team, but uh, this uh, chart uh, gives you uh, some information. Yeah, uh, you can imagine that if there are not two epics, but if there are like uh, ten epics and the number of tasks in the sprint, which is maybe like not even a month, maybe three months long, uh, it can be quite uh, it can be quite big. Uh, this uh, this chart. Uh, gives you uh, gi gives you an overview whether things are in progress, they are being done or, or not. Uh, at the same time, uh, this uh, velocity uh, plot, of course, when one works on one task only at a time, it looks like teeth, yeah, of 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 uh, of, of uh, well, not the very good teeth, uh, so to say. 
and technically it's, it's uh, possible to, to somehow compute the estimated completion based on data. All right, uh, um, you have seen something, uh, so I guess uh, that's pretty good. Better to give you a couple of minutes for questions, if you have some. Yeah, the, the question is, uh, we have uh, been using this uh, for, a couple of, uh, for a couple of months, which is come kind of correct, uh, and whether we have been able uh, to uh, validate uh, that the things kind of, kind of match, yeah, the, the estimations match. Uh, so uh, we, uh, as, as we are using uh, the uh, story points, the only thing you really match is the proportion. Right, uh, you uh, you measure the capacity based on previous executions. So the the only thing that uh, you need to be sure of that you estimate consistently that uh, task which is two times more difficult to get rough, roughly two times more, more state points and so on. Uh, so definitely there is uh, in our case concrete case uh, of the team uh, there is like uh, definitely room to improve. Uh, one quarter is a little bit better, and the other quarter is a little bit worse, and uh, that's usually a symptom that uh, things are not clear. So we have identified, we have done uh, other mistakes, yeah, like for example, like exi um, decomposition of epics, that it was not really, uh, not, 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 not really uh, matching the execution and making it easy to collaborate. So uh, we are not even in a position to conduct it and hope that it will it, it would uh, give like a positive result yeah so we are mainly removing the big problems at, at the moment I, if it answers answers roughly roughly the, the question Yeah, so uh, we uh, prototype, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, uh, what are the outcomes of using the tool? Yeah, if I sum summarize. Uh, we definitely found out that it has value uh, using, uh, during our secondary iterations. Our primary iterations are long, but we every two weeks we kind of reevaluate, but th we don't have any deliverables, so it's an internal event. Uh, and on those uh, secondary iterations, this tool is undeniably providing good overview of what's going on and whether there are problems that should be addressed. Yeah, this is what really works. It's not so more about three point estimations. It's it's more about like uh, the, the the these charts and taking a look and and saying yeah this doesn't look so well. Uh, mainly decision support. Yeah, the uh, the outcome is that it provides a decision support uh, for those interesting interested in uh, completing the work and also uh, as I mentioned at the beginning like uh, there is probably a little bit less friction uh, during during the estimation process and we hope that we'll be able to use this uh, completion uh, projection and to see how uh, whether we are actually sli slipping or not so uh, we are we are out of time technically uh, I'll be around. The tool, uh, the sli slides will be online. The tool is open source. It can connect to Jira, whatever, uh, and so on. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so you will you will know what, what to follow. Yeah. So thank you for your attention, and have a great uh, rest of the conference. <laughs>